I recently released a video on how to paint the nine loyalist legions for legions imperialis. Now it's time to tackle the nine traitor legions. My name's Stuart, welcome to Miniature Realms, let's tackle the heretics. Now I'm going to assume that you haven't watched the previous video. If you are a filthy heretic, you may well not want to watch a video about painting the loyalist legions. So I'm gonna cover a few things off that will have already been covered in the first video. The way this video will work will show a basic stage which is more than enough to get your armies on the tabletop and then I will continue and do a few little extra details and highlights that really aren't needed but are there for people who want those for ideas. Now I use many many different brands and ranges of painting myself but I'm trying here to stick to mostly Citadel colour. I know there may be new players to the game or people returning to the game that haven't painted in a while and if you're picking up your bits for Legion's Imperial Artists you'll find that Citadel colour is one of those easiest things to get your hands on. One final note on that, when I do use a paint that's not part of the Citadel range in this video I will try my best to remember to give you a Citadel comparison. I am an airbrush user and I'll be using the airbrush throughout the tutorial. However, all the stages I use the airbrush for are at the beginning and can easily be substituted by using rattle cans and a dry brushing effect. All the miniatures have been primed black to start with with a rattle can and then the very first stage for each miniature is based around underpainting. A lot of the time that will be a white zenithal or a white top down paint and I will try and discuss that as we go throughout the video so you can understand why I'm doing this. So to the painting desk and the Empress children are up first and I'm using some bold titanium white from Pro Acryl here. I'm using this through the airbrush, mostly top down, but I am being fairly liberal with it, getting around the sides and the edges as well and just leaving a little bit of shadow underneath. And this is my underpainted miniature. So when I turn to my next paint here, which is Contrast Leviathan Purple, when I apply it to the miniature, you get a little bit of a two-tone effect. So the contrast paint will already give you some natural shade when it forms into the recesses by giving yourself a bit of a zenithal highlight you can really enhance that and, and do a lot more work meaning you, you won't necessarily need to carry on highlighting afterwards and if you want to paint these miniatures really really quick that's the way to do it now if you don't have an airbrush and this will, will, will cover an awful lot of the the tutorials in this video you can get around this by priming in gray and doing a heavy dry brush in white even still priming in black and doing a very heavy dry brush in in, in white as well so you can get around this you'll you'll hear it as called slap chop but essentially it's just a form of underpainting and giving yourself that kind of grayscale to work with first really really aids using these contrast style paints essentially you're using them as glazes so after I've painted the body color in there, I'm using Contrast Black Legion and I'm picking out the, the bolt gun here. I'm also going to work on the exhaust manifolds on the back of his backpack as well. Now we're moving into those optional stages. We have Chemos Purple from Citadel Air and a little bit of Off-White here from Model Color by Vallejo. You can use any white here. I just prefer to not use Citadel White so I find them a bit chalky and hard to work with. But I'm just using both paints. I've got them on a wet palette just off camera there, working my way through the spectrum um, and just doing some very, very standard highlighting. So you're leaving the recess color um, that was there before, adding some Chemos Purple and then building up, adding a little bit more white and just putting a slightly thinner line on there as well. So all your standard techniques for, for highlighting miniatures using regular painting can be used on top of contrast paints and this is why I find them really, really flexible. I much prefer base coating in contrast over that underpainted method rather than the old method of painting in flat colour, washing and then highlighting afterwards. So I'm just taking my time here, working my way around the miniature, slowly adding more white and, and slowly making those highlights a little bit thinner, concentrating around the edges onto the top areas and things. And again, this is the optional side. This might be an awful lot to do for these small miniatures, but I really wanted to show the progression between doing the underpainting method and doing the contrast all over, picking out the weapon, and then that could be done to show them what you can do if you want to highlight further and make them look a little bit more special. And of course, you could push this really, really far and make them extra, extra special, which I'm not really showing in this video. Um, but hopefully you can take this as far as you want to and it's giving you some ideas. So once that is dry, it's time to do a little bit of dry brushing and I'm using Game Air Silver, but you can use anything from the Citadel range. Iron Hand Steel would work. We've got Room Fang Steel. 
and even Stormhouse Silver if you wanted to as well. Those are all lighter um, silver colours rather than the, the gun metal, the darker style colours. They would all work. And you're just doing a very, very, very faint tickle here. I'm just picking out the rough edges on the tops of the, the backpacks and it's particularly around the bolt gun as well. So it looks like a mixture of a sort of worn metal and highlighting and it just does a really nice effect. It's very, very simple on this miniature. I'm not going all over because I don't want it to look too, too messy, but just focusing on that bolt gun and the tops of the, the backpack and maybe the odd little bit here and there and you end up with a really nice effect. Moving on swiftly to Necro Gold here from Scale 75. I love their metallics range, so I'm afraid this is another non-citadel, but you can pick any gold colour from the citadel range as well. So Aruric Armour Gold might be nice, and Gehenna's Gold would be another option. Whatever you have in your paint range if you're a citadel paint user. But what I'm doing here is just adding a little bit of accent colour to make it look more Empress Children-like. So what I've decided to do is pick out those exhaust manifolds in gold, just to make it stand out a little bit more. Now this belt is entirely optional and really, really not needed at this scale. I don't have decals, otherwise I'd be, be using them. I'm just painting a very, very faint approximation of the Empress Children Aquila here. So I'm just painting a bit of a cross really and then feathering out afterwards. It doesn't look very much like it close to, but from a distance we'll, we'll give that idea. And there we have one finished Empress Children Legionary. As I've said earlier, you don't have to do all those stages. If you cut out the highlighting with the purple stages, the rest is super quick and super easy and that's a really good way of army painting. So now we move on to the Iron Warriors, and again I'm moving away from Citadel colour here for now, and this is black metal from Scale 75, but ideally what you're looking for is a nice dark metallic colour, and Iron Warriors from the Citadel range would be a perfect one. I'm using the airbrush, you could paint this on all over if you wanted to, or what I'd opt for probably is a very, very heavy dry brush, almost an overwash, where you're covering most of it and just leaving a little bit of the black in the recesses, which is essentially what I'm doing here with the airbrush. Now we're back to that game air silver again and the substitutions that I mentioned before also exist for this but this time I am dry brushing and I'm going to be doing it lightly all over. No, not too much because I don't want to take away that dark dulled metal look that is so kind of synonymous with the Iron Warriors. So I'm focusing and then on the weapon and on the top a little bit so it's more like those edge highlights. There's so little paint on the brush there I don't want the flat surfaces to get too covered but you get a nice little effect. And just like the other miniatures, I'm heading to Black Legion Contrast Paint for the weapons. Now we've already dry brushed the weapon a little bit there at the front, but I want it to stand out. So I kind of end up working back on myself. So I paint the weapon in, but more importantly, to make it really look like the Iron Warriors, I'm painting both shoulder pads in black. And again, it just starts to make them look like Iron Warriors rather than just a metallic scheme. Back to that Game Air Silver again, just to give the faintest of dry brushes now that I've painted that weapon in black. You also added a little skull-shaped dot on the right shoulder pad as well to act as the emblem for the Legion. Then the crazy stuff, if you really want it to look like Iron Warriors, adding a little bit of hazard stripes on there seems to be the way to go. And that is very small miniature, so you, you probably wouldn't want to do this on many of them. But I'm just painting in one panel here with Avalanche Sunset, which is a nice, easy coverage base layer from, from Citadel. And then after that, grabbing the Contrast Black Legion in again and just painting in some black lines to, to give that impression of a hazard stripe area on the armour. And I think that came out quite well. It's very hard to see and photograph um, in this scale, so it's a bit of, bit of a pain to show you. But that little bit of uh, hazard striping just really makes it stand out. And this is an incredibly simple and quick army to paint. So moving swiftly on to Night Lords, and you'll see this is prepped the same way as the Empress Children. So we have that zenithal style, that underpainted white. And I'm using contrast Leviathan Blue, which is a really nice, rich, dark blue. Darker than navy blue, I'd say. Really, really dark and almost black in its deepest points. And it's perfect for Night Lords. Returning to the Contrast Black Legion, which is a method I use in all of the legions, so painting in the weapon in black and the exhaust manifolds on the back as well. Now we start looking at those optional highlights, and this is Altdorf Garth Blue, and it's a very, very light blue. It looks really bright in the pot, but when it's on the palette and you thin it a little bit, once you start applying it to the miniature, it doesn't come across quite as bright, so you're able to, to layer it on quite thin, and it doesn't look too striking. So I'm just focusing again around the edges, around where the light would hit, and just wet blending a little bit, and just slowly building up the intensity again. 
This is not needed. I understand that people of different painting abilities will be watching this video. And if you're new to painting and you're looking for that quick get them on the table effect, then just stop at the divide and blue wash over the over the pre shade, the pre highlight, the zenith or the underpainting, whatever you like to call it. And I think you'll have a really nice looking army on the table. Now back to the game air silver. As I say, swap out for any of the Citadel versions you like, and I'm doing that same really, really gentle tickle of a dry brush, mostly focused around the bolt gun, but also a little bit on the backpack as well. And now we start playing around with the real extras and this Araman Blue. I've never used it before, but it's a really beautiful, striking colour. I've thinned it a lot and I'm painting in some very, very thin lines on the armour to look like the wonderful sort of lightning strike pattern that you often see on the Legion's armour in artwork. For many people, this is crazy to do on each of the miniatures because there will be so many in your arm and it will take forever. I actually found it easier than, than doing some of the other little bits. I probably would do it for mine. Um, I'd maybe do this over the, the, the standard highlighting, which I did in the previous stage, if I was going to pick one or the other. So I think this kind of indicates them a little bit more. But if you're not confident of doing little thin lines, I really wouldn't worry about this stage. But I do think it was a bit of fun. So now reaching for Evil Sun Scarless and I've got some model colour off-white here as well and I'm just going to have a little play at doing something that looks the tiniest bit like the emblem. So we have a little white dot for the skull and then the red painted in there to look like the wings for the Night Lords logo. And there we have number three done in this video. So there is your finished Night Lord again. Take, take from it what you want. I think the most important thing is the underpainting, the contrast wash and then those sort of black areas with the dry brush in stage to get your army done if you are enjoying this video and maybe others before and you'd like to support the channel i do have a patreon and a new discord now as well the patreon has a few levels so the bottom ones are very much support for the channel as they grow you can start getting some some freebies like dice and things and the top levels include painting tuition as well I've recently launched a Discord which is open to non-patrons as well so go and share your work there and chat with other people and myself which is a little bit easier to do there as it would be in the video comments below which is always a little bit difficult but there are also some extra levels on the discord which is only open to patrons as well. Anyway forgive me for my own mid-roll advert there let's get back to the painting. Slightly different route here for the World Eaters. I started with black, but then I'm going to cover most of the miniature here with this grey primer from Army Painter. If you are painting a whole army here by yourself, I would recommend a grey primer first for this. And then you can do the next stages, which will be white, either by using an airbrush if you have it, or maybe by using a dry brush. That will be another way of doing it. But essentially you want a grey base, and that's why I'm using the airbrush here. But I don't own rattle cans of grey because I use the airbrush so much, so this was the easiest way for me to achieve it. So I'm returning here back to that bold titanium white that we saw me use on the underpainting for the originals and I'm just going over that grey layer with the white mostly from the top down here. I want a little bit of that grey showing through as a shadow. And the next stage is a contrast apothecary white and I'm using a little bit of medium here and that's 50-50 mix and I'm just painting over the whole miniature and allowing that apothecary white to really get in all the recesses and when you're using a contrast like this it almost becomes a wash and a shade rather than the kind of glaze effect because what you really want here is, is the effect that it gives when it settles in all those recesses. Then we're back to the contrast black legion again painting in that weapon and the exhaust manifolds. And then to contrast Asuraman Blue, which I'm going to be using for the shoulder pads. And as you paint this colour in, the Legion really starts to leap out at you. And you can, you can picture it as the World Eaters. Now we start moving on to those optional stages. And I'm back to the Pro Acryl Totanium White. And I'm just using this on the palette. And I'm just using it to, to highlight, really. And just any of the flat panels, which had a little bit of the apothecary white pooling on them. Anything that looks a little bit too dull. I'm just going back and picking them out as I highlighted. It just really, really makes a miniature pop. From a couple of foot away on the table, probably not needed. And the same goes with the next stage here, as so I'm using layer techless blue just to add a little thin highlight, a bit of a layer around the edge and a little bit on the top of these shoulder pads where the light would catch. Cracking out the Game Air Silver again for the dry brushing stage. Again, just the lightest of tickles on the, where the weapon is here because the miniature is mostly white. It won't show up too much if you get it elsewhere. I do still attack the back of the backpack and the, the top of the exhaust manifolds. And also a little bit on the shoulder pad where those studs are because it tends to catch there as well and, and just give a nice little effect. 
So here we have some Evil Sun Scarlet, and then this is again in place of decals. I'm just going to do a very, very basic approximation of what the Legion symbol may look like um, on, on the shoulder. Again, if you've got a whole stand of these, you might just might not bother doing it at all because they're not going to be noticed. But we've basically got a, a very light circle there with a few little lines and it look like teeth. Then, of course, they're World Eaters, so Blood for the Blood God was a must. Obviously, this is a small miniature, I don't want to completely cover it here, so I'm just dotting on a few bits here or there, but it was too good to miss. And that's your World Eater done. And again, you could do these really, really quickly. You could also opt for a white prime and just use the apothecary white, a quick white dry brush, painting those shoulder pads and weapons and a little dry brush and you're done as well. So again, just take from the video what you like, maybe you pick up the odd little tip, hopefully it inspires you. So now on to the Death Guard, and I'm using Leather Brown Surface Primer from Vallejo. Now I'm doing this over the black primers it is in the first place. Just adds a little bit more depth. If you don't have an airbrush, this will be a time to pick up a, a brown rattle can, I think. And be very careful because there's very small miniatures. If you go too heavy with a rattle can, you could be in trouble with the detail. But paint your miniatures brown, and, and that's a really, really good start for any Death Guard. We want the white to end up looking a sort of duller, dirtier white, and giving it the brown base will really help with that. But we are back to the Pro Acryl Bowl Titanium White afterwards. And again, I'm using an airbrush. If you're not an airbrush user at this stage, this is where you would be doing a very, very heavy dry brush. One of those new style dry brushes, the very soft bristled ones, the rounded ones. If you've uh, got lots of money and you want to buy the really cool ones, go and buy some um, Series D stuff from Artis Opus. They are fantastic. I've used them a lot myself. There are some cheaper versions available as well. If not, um, use as makeup brushes or something. They do a great job. Moving swiftly on to the wash stage here, and I'm using some thin contrast skeleton horde. I'm being a bit of careful how I apply it here. I don't want it just to completely obliterate all of the flat surfaces. I want to tone them down, provide a bit of a filter to really sort of give them that brownish tinge, but also want it to settle into all the recesses. So I'm part glazing here and part washing, so I'm making sure it's going in those recesses as well. And no surprise at this stage, we are heading to contrast black legion to paint in the bolt gun and those exhaust manifolds. And to do the shoulder pads, I found that the Militarum Green is probably the, the nicest shade in terms of a complete match. It's, it's, a bit, it's one of those contrast paints that's it's slightly thin compared to others. So I did find that two thin coats of this worked better, which you don't always want to do with, with a contrast paint. Um, and you could just paint a, a flat colour in at this stage as well. You don't have to use contrast paints. It doesn't speed up or slow you down an awful lot. So see what you have in your paint collection and go for it. So I'm going to highlight those pads with a little bit of Russian uniform green from model colour. Um, but Death Guard green would be a really, really good colour to, to use for that. You could use it for the base colour as well. So if you're looking for a Citadel colour there, Death Guard green would be a really good option. And if you do want to highlight it, you can just pop a little bit of white in there. Now to model colour off-white from Vallejo, and I'm going to be doing a little bit of a highlight. Surprise, surprise, again, this is we're getting into the very optional stages now. So rather than using the, the Pro Acryl White, I'm going for a more off-white for obvious reasons. I want it to look a little bit more creamy, a little bit more dirty. Now, I don't want to go too bright here, so I'm, I'm thin the paint well, and I'm just focusing on those higher areas. And now back to the Game Air Silver, so that nice bright silver for the dry brush stage. I'm just tickling it on here. And remember, if you're looking for all the Citadel alternatives to those, you could use Iron Hand Steel, you could use Rune Fang Steel, Storm Hose Silver, something like that. Even Iron Breaker will do any of the lighter metallic colours, not the dark metallic colours. There we have Contrast Black Legion and some Off-White again. And this is the playing around with the Legion symbol thing here. So just trying to do something that approximates the, the, the Death Guard Legion symbol on the right shoulder pad in place of a decal. So if you have decals by then or you use them for somewhere else, maybe you've got the Legion sheets and they often have some very, very small ones on there. I don't know I'll be looking for some when I choose which Legion I do, but I wasn't going to buy 18 Legion sheets just to try it for this video. Unfortunately, I'm not quite rich enough for that. So this just gives you an idea of how you can make a little mark to trick the eye into thinking that the Legion symbol's there. And there we have the finished Death Guard Legionary, and I, I think white's so achievable now with all the tools we have, even if you don't use an airbrush, um, using these new contrast paints over a white base, um, and then doing a bit of a dry brush afterwards will give you a perfect effect. Now, a little bit different here for the Thousand Suns. I'm using Elven Gold from Scale 75. You could use Retributor Armor for the Citadel range if you were using it that way. And if you weren't using an airbrush, just a gold rattle can would, would absolutely be the way to go. 
Now I'm opting here for contrast flesh terrors red and some medium. You can use contrast medium if you have it. I just happen to have the Vallejo Express color one on hand. Now I'm, it's a bit of a 50-50 mix here. I'm trying to thin it a little bit. It's a very rich and vibrant red. We're trying to do a bit of a poor man's candy red on these. You can do a lovely candy red with an airbrush and I wanted to keep these more accessible so only using those airbrushes for stages which you could achieve at home using a rattle can and dry brushing which I've mentioned before. So I'm brush painting this on and you know, for models of this scale this is this is absolutely perfect. If I was doing this as an army and doing the tanks as well I would probably airbrush this stage on but this works quite well. You're just showing a little bit of that gold through as well so you do get that same contrast effect that kind of natural highlight and shadow but you're also getting that slightly glossy look now when this dries it does dry quite matte still so we have a little a trick at the end to, to help it look a little bit shiny of course we have contrast black legion to paint in the weapon I'm using some sky grey here from Model Colour. It's just a really, really great paint. It paints over anything really, but you could use grey sear if you're looking at the, the contrast range. would do the same job very, very well. And I'm just using this to paint in the shoulder pads of accent colours. You could go for just one. You could go for both. I'm going to go for both in this instance. So I'm painting this theme first, so when I cover it with white afterwards, it just kind of gives me a bit of a highlight and also goes on smoother. Now it's time for that white and for this, because I want it to look quite clean. I'm using that Pro Acryl Bold Titanium White again. I really recommend it if you haven't tried it. It's a fantastic white, even when it's very, very thin. Its coverage is absolutely fantastic. Turning to that Elven Gold, so Retributor Armor, if you're following along with the Citadel side of things, and I'm going to be using it here for lots of those little accents. So painting in those studs on the, the sides of the armor used it on the exhaust manifolds and even the elbow pads in this instance just to really make it stand out because this is mark six armor there's less kind of individual panels if it was mark four or something like that you could pick out the knee pads and, and, and things as well and much like the others i'm having a little little dash at doing something that looks a little bit like the legion symbol so here really it's a bit of a, a, a loose circle with some little stars coming off it really I've left the Game Air Silver to the end, the little dry brushing stage right to the end on this one because any little marks on there will, will look absolutely fantastic as highlights for the armour at any stage, even on top of the gold. And then afterwards, I'm just painting on a little bit of gloss varnish that I have. You could use our coat, the little pots, if I think so it'll still make it. I'm just painting this on to the armour, not thick at all, but it just adds a little bit of shine and gloss to it, which gives you that effect for that candy coat. And there's your finished Thousand Suns Legion. Again, that little gloss varnish at the end just really makes it stand out and it's very much recognisable as a Thousand Suns Legionary. So on to the last three now, and we're on to the Sons of Horus and Pterodon Turquoise. And this is one of the most problematic ranges to do just from contrast paints alone, but I wanted to stick with that as the brief knowing that some people would want to do the kind of white or grey prime thing and, and whack some contrast on there as a way of getting these armies done quickly. I'm not decided that if I went with this as an army, whether this would be my final solution, but this is definitely a method and a way of doing it. And, and the green is close enough that once put on like this and you add the little extra details, it's very much recognisable as Sons of Horus, which is the brief I set myself. Um, however, I, it's a little bit harder to, to highlight up from without lots of work and, and, and make it still look like Sons of Horus, which I do, um, but they're almost two separate paint jobs in the end, as you'll see. So the next stage is the Contrast Black Legion, which I put on the, the weapons here. And I keep forgetting to mention that I, I do the little holster at the side for the pistol as well. And some of the, the shots, that I haven't done it because I forget to the end because I'm a fool. But to do that as well at the sides, the exhaust manifolds and the bolt gun as well. Now here's the optional highlight stage and I'm using Calibrite Green and Gauss Blaster Green and, and they're really lovely colours and they work really well for this. Uh, I found falling into trying to use the Sons of Horus Greens was a bit of a trap. It just didn't really work with the, the, the base coat layer that I'd use. So I think if you want to use those Sons of Horus Green paints that, that Citadel will make, um, maybe you'll, you'll start with those as a flat base layer rather than using the contrast. But as I said, I was sticking to this brief and, and this worked really, really well. So I have both of these colours on my palette and I thinned them all, probably two parts paint, one part water and blended them together. And I'm just slowly building up layers on the, the flat areas, pretty much traditional painting, adding more of the lighter mix all the time. 
So we're back to that dry brushing stage with the silver here now. So just that faint tickle on the end of the weapons here and on the backs of the backpacks and, and, and all the stuff that like you've heard me say a million times before over both of these videos. Returning to the elven gold here from scale 75. So something like Retributor armor would be perfect. I'm just painting in a few little details again, just to add to that feeling that it's it's a Sons of Horus Marines. So I've decided to go for the gold studs here. You could go, go for gold exhaust manifolds and things if you wanted to as well. And then a very, 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 very basic Eye of Horus sign in gold on that right shoulder pad as well. Again, this would be something I'd, I would prefer to do with the decal if they existed or I had them at this point. And there we have the final Sons of Horus Marine. Again, I think it looks pretty cool, but it was definitely a lot more work to get that final green than the others. So if you're looking to get your army on the table quickly, the contrast layer and then all the rest of the stuff will work just fine. For the word bearers, we return to the Flesh Terrors Red, and that just gives you a slightly darker, richer red than the Blood Angels Red that I used on, funnily enough, the Blood Angels. You could use either colour on either, but as a total piece of all 18 legions, I felt using this slightly darker, richer red would be perfect. So it's that Black Legion stage again here. So we are putting it on the weapon, the exhaust manifolds, but also on the two shoulder pads here. For the highlight, I've opt for base Mephiston Red. It's slightly more desaturated than the Evil Sun Scarlet that I used on the Blood Angels, which again is what we're after here with this slightly duller, less vibrant red in, in one sense. And again, this is one of the easier ones to, to do a quick highlight on. You don't need as, as, as many delicate layers or blending as you did with the Sons of Horus. So I found just picking out where the light would catch most, just a few little dots here and there really makes the miniature pop. But again, it's also very, very optional. And if you're looking for an army on the table quickly job, then the contrast paint alone over that underpainted miniature does a fantastic job. So we're back to the silver dry brushing stage again, and I'm using Game Air Silver. Um, as I said earlier, you could opt for one of the many, many Citadel options for that as well. So focusing on the bolt gun and on the top and sides of the backpack. So having a little pop at the logo as well. So it's just a little mixture of shapes really to, to trick the eye into thinking the logo's there. So we start with a little bit of bold titanium white to almost look like the the, the skull area and the, the book that's open. Then a little bit of contrast blood angels red and Nasdreg yellow. So a little bit of dot of red there and some yellow underneath it to sort of look like the flaming area. And just finishing off with a little dot of contrast black legion as well in the center and it really just gives your eye the little trick it needs and there's your finished word bearer as well and i think he looks like a word bearer which is kind of what we aim for some of those extras are of course optional now on to that final legion and we've got two metallics here so we've got the black metal and we got the game air silver so the black metal goes on through the airbrush first you could start with a silver rattle can if you weren't using the airbrush that would probably be the right way to go a bit like you did with the iron hands or something like that i'm not too worried about much of the black showing through here I want this to be lighter than the the iron hands a bit in the same way as the thousand suns were and then top down only, I'm using the bright silver here. I'm really trying to just hit those top areas where the highlights are. You could do this with a dry brush very, very easily. Once that zenithal, I suppose, with metallics is dry, you can turn to the contrast paints. And I'm using Crotzegal scales. There are a few other options here. I tested quite a few. So the Pterodon turquoise is, a, is another option. You've got quite a few in that sort of blue-green range. A Kellen green is another one. So pick your favourite. I found that this one, because it was a little bit brighter in its finish, was what was needed at this scale. So they didn't look too dark and, and dirty. It's very easy to kind of lose the detail. In the, the in the kind of the darkness if you if you don't have a bright enough color so all your natural shadow here is where the, the paint is pulling and because you've got such a light area from that silver underneath it really really makes it stand out as always and for the last time in this video we're painting a bolt gun with black legion don't forget those exhaust manifolds as well you could also use this with alpha legion to do the odd black shoulder pad as well sometimes you'll see a white shoulder pad so some of those methods you've seen already so for using the black shoulder pads or the, the white on the thousand suns you could use as alternative schemes on lots of the legions but definitely on the alpha legion 
Now we're on to that silver dry brush stage and in many ways this could be one of the, the most simple and most striking legions if you're looking for something that you, you need less highlights and, and the things on because it's very very hard to highlight this and, and without losing the, the metallic effect for it. So this dry brush just in all the areas we mentioned before really really just highlights the miniature quite nicely, it makes the armour look worn and really makes it pop. I decided to go in with the, the hairy brush and just paint a few edges on with that same bright silver as well, really just to make it stand out. And I suppose this is that optional stage and how it looks for the, the sort of the metallic paint job. Again, very much an optional thing and many people will choose not to do this, but it definitely kind of makes those panels stand out a little bit more. And then using that same silver again, I'm just painting in the Alpha Legion symbol on the side. So we've got a bit of a kind of an A type shape and then the upside down sort of ultramarines type shape over the top as well. So it's a little bit easier than some of them to do. But again, you probably wouldn't want to do it for hundreds and hundreds of these and, and look to find a, a way of doing it with decals. And there we have our finished Alpha Legion Legionary and uh, again one of the more simple schemes but also pretty effective as well and a very good way of getting an army quickly on the table without using any advanced techniques really so I quite like those. And there we have it, all nine traitor legions covered in the video. Um, if you haven't checked out the nine loyalist legions in the previous video, please do so. So that's all 18 covered now in the two videos and hopefully you found it useful one way or another. It's been lots of fun doing this and, and working out how I do it myself and I may well revise those over time when, especially when I come to painting a whole army I still haven't made my mind up which one I'm going to go for let me know in the comments which legions you're going for whether it's loyalists or traitors I'd love to know what you're going to use to paint them how you're going to paint them and like I mentioned earlier the uh, the channel has a discord now so go and hop over into that and, and, and share your painted videos in there chat about how you want to do it and if you want to become a patron as I mentioned earlier that supports the channel as well and you get a few more extra areas to talk on the discord as well that a few more channels that are more subdivided rather than big chat groups so it's well worth checking out both options but either way i'd love to have you over there involved in the the friendly conversations we do have if you are new to the channel, please do check out the other videos. There's loads and loads of painting tutorials on there for many, many game systems, and I'll definitely be turning to Legions Imperialis probably when I've decided what Legion I'm going for, and I'll do some painting tutorials and things on tanks as well. I probably won't cover all 18 Legions as tank tutorials. I think that would be a little bit overkill, but I will definitely be painting some things along the way and showing you some transferable techniques regardless of, of, of how you paint them. If you enjoyed the video, give us a like. It does help the video get seen by other people. But thank you very much for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you soon.